Hello, and welcome to this training on Adobe Premiere Pro. And congrats on making the decision to learn and master this incredible program. Premiere Pro gives you the distinct ability to harness your creative energies in the form of video editing like no other. And once you learn even the basics, you'll have a skill set that can be used in almost any industry and field. Now, just a quick note that this course is designed to be an interactive hands-on course. So occasionally, you'll hear me say things like, pause the video and practice on your own. So make sure you download the class files from the link below to do so. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential hands-on manner. I'm looking forward to teaching you all the cool things that Premiere Pro has to offer. So stay tuned and get ready to learn. Welcome back everybody. In this video, we are gonna talk about text and titles and captions and all kinds of good stuff here. So before I do that, let's do just a little bit of quick review because I kind of want to get some of my panels changed up a little bit so I can see things a little bit better so I can actually have some, some content to work with. Okay, so if you recall, I have all my bins and everything over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my video bin here and I'm going to open up to where I have my science and everything but i'd actually really like to see everything that i have inside of here to have a nice little preview of it so i'm just going to go over to here to this icon view and then i'm going to open up to let's say video and then i'm going to open up to science very good now i can actually see everything there and remember i can do my little scrubbing there and i can see kind of what's what all right so just a little review on that okay and then of course you can see how i have my little tabs here and you can see I can go from tab to tab so I can see kind of what I had before. And then you can even go over to here to see kind of what's underneath there hierarchically. All right, and then I can come back to here where I started if I like to. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here. And what my goal in this exercise is to find a backdrop for some text, okay? Because it's kind of a nice effect to have a little bit of, you know, some kind of visual interest behind my text, behind my titles, behind my caption, you know, just to kind of just show a little preview of what's gonna be there by a little excitement, a little bit of context. So if I go ahead and just double click on this, it's gonna show up over here in my source panel. And you'll notice here, I can play this. And when I play it, yeah. you see, there it is. Okay, that's great. And I also notice here, I have an in and out still chosen there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out, All right? And then maybe I can just go back and I can sort of scrub it and say, okay, what do I want there? All right, you know what? That actually looks pretty great. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my in and out. So I'm gonna say in, keep playing it. All right, good. And then right when it kind of starts to fade out a little bit, then I'm gonna do my out. Okay, so again, that's just the I key and the O key on your keyboard. All right, now I'm gonna place my playhead on my timeline to be where I want it to go, all right? So if you recall, I could do a number of different things here. I could just drag my video, just drag my audio, whatever I wanna do, or I could even use my insert or I can use my overwrite. What do I wanna do, right? So it just depends. I'm not really gonna be overwriting anything. I actually want to just insert this and just notice I can also just use the comma key and then bam, notice what that does. Okay, great, and it comes in, bam, and there's my opening shot. Very good, so I have that there. That's amazing, very cool. All right, so just a little bit of review there, again, in terms of your organization, a little review in terms of how you can get content in and be able to kind of pick and choose parts you want from your source and then bring it into the timeline. Excellent. So my goal here, right, is to have some type on top of this little backdrop. And this is gonna be my little introduction to get people a little excited and everything. It's like, whoa, exploratorium, wow, psychedelic, really cool stuff, right? So people say that. So what I'm going to do now is bring in some text, okay? I'm just gonna type out a few words there and then I'm going to edit that text. So how do I bring in text? So you're gonna see here on this toolbar that we've explored quite a bit already, we're gonna see that there's this option that says T, and you'll see there it is. Move your mouse over it. It should say this is the type tool. So you click on that and now I'm in the type tool. And very easily now, I can just start typing, right? After I click and drag and make a nice little big box here. And you can see I'm able to now start typing some things out. You'll also notice that a new track appears on V2. All right, so I'm just going to start typing out Exploratorium 
after dark. All right, great. So you see how that comes in, just like anything else, just draw out your text box and start typing. Now, what you don't see here, which I'm expecting that you expected to see that, is that you probably wanted to see some editing tools, right? You wanted to see some formatting options. Okay, so it's not very obvious, it's a little bit hidden, and it's also kind of in a place that you wouldn't expect it. And that's gonna be in a new panel called graphics. Okay, we have not explored this. Okay, and they're considering text as graphics. So this is gonna be one of those things you're like a little head scratcher. Well, why is it in graphics? Okay, it is because it is. That's what Adobe has said for it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on graphics. And then if you just wait about five seconds or so, things are gonna change pretty dramatically because I'm gonna be in the sort of graphic workspace. Okay, so things kind of shift around a little bit, right? Not dramatically, but things do shift around a little bit. And you're gonna see now I have this essential graphics panel that opens up here. Okay, and then this is broken down into two tabs. You can see I have my browse tab, which we're gonna be coming back to in a little bit, and I have my edit tab. Okay, now some of these, especially those of you who have some Adobe experience, you know, working with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, some of these should actually look very familiar to you. So if we come down to this section here, you're gonna see we have a text section and we have all kinds of good stuff here. We can see here's where our font is. You can see you can increase the size of the font. You can adjust the alignment, the tracking, the letting, the line spacing, okay? All those good things, right? So line spacing is also known as letting, okay? And then you can see tracking is gonna give us some space between all the letters within the word. And then kerning is gonna give us space just in between individual letters, okay? So if you wanna explore some of these other ones as well, feel free to do so. Okay, so not a big fan of this font. So what I'm gonna do now is now make some changes to it. So super easy, I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight it. And now again, because I'm inside of my graphics panel, I'm inside over here, essential graphics. And then I'm gonna come over here down to my text. I'm just gonna go ahead and click. I'm gonna find something to work with. Okay, let's just try maybe Monsters Attack. Okay, Exploratorium After Dark. Okay, maybe I'll try to find another one here. How about this one? That's kind of fun. All right, and then maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. And just notice that you can actually increase your font size in one of two ways, right? You'll notice here I have this little ruler right there. I can just go ahead and slide that over. But I also have this guy here, whereas if I move my mouse over it, my cursor is gonna turn into a little double-sided arrow, and then I can go ahead and resize it that way. So if I click and drag this way, you can see, bam, I can do that. Or if you move your mouse over it, you can see how you can go left and right right on top of that, just the same. Okay, so whatever your pleasure is, that's how you do it. Okay, now let me go ahead, I'm gonna make exploratory about that same width, and then I'm gonna make after dark, maybe another width, okay, or I should say size, okay, and I'm gonna make everything centered. All right, and then if I wanna adjust, let's just say the line spacing here, you can see here, I can adjust that. And that's gonna be this section right here. Oops, excuse me. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see that's gonna be my letting. Okay, so pretty happy with that. But you know, let's just say I wanted to change the color. All right, let's just say I wanna change the fill color, which is gonna be basically what you'd expect it to be. That's the color on the inside versus the stroke, I might wanna add on a little outline to it, I can very easily do that down here. So if I wanna change this, let's just say to maybe a dark red color, I can very easily do that. And I click away and I'll be able to see that. And then if I wanted to maybe put an outline around it, that's gonna be a stroke, okay? And then I can maybe increase the size of the stroke, right? You notice here it's just showing a one, right? Let me just make that, I'm just gonna click on it this time and just say five. All right, and then in order to kind of like settle this and say, okay, I'm kind of done, done, so I don't actually accidentally kind of click and make another text box, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool so then I can actually really see it, what it's going to do, right? So then it kind of like takes me to my sort of home base there, right? And that looks pretty cool, right? I'm pretty happy with that. So just know that's you know essentially how this is done. Now, if you wanted to have more type on this, you could very, very easily do that by coming over 
to this section right here. So you can actually have another layer of type if you wanted to. Like if you just wanted to have something completely different where you just didn't want it to be part of this you know, text block, you can do that by coming over to here where you can say, hey, I'm gonna do a new layer, right, of what? Of text. Or maybe you're gonna do a shape, right, of some kind, right? You can very, very easily do that. I'll just do it for fun right now. Just so you can see, wow, that's just gonna show up right there as a new text layer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit delete on my keyboard and that goes away. All right now, let's see this in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back to here or I can do it from here. I'm just gonna hit the space bar. All right, and there we go. In a little bit, we're gonna learn about transitions and stuff. So I know it's a little bit jumpy, but you'll notice what happens here. Okay, and maybe some of you already caught this, right? What's actually going on and why am I seeing my text over this next clip, right? Because it's a little bit too long, right? So that's a really simple fix. I'm just gonna come over here and trim that, and that just locks right in there, okay? And then by the way, uh, for your locking, when you do see that little magnet thing, that's typically happening because of this snap in timeline, right? It snaps right in there, okay? So you'll see that all over the place, right? Whenever you want something to snap in there. If it's not snapping properly, you just need to turn this on. Okay, so let's just watch it again now that I've made those changes. Okay, very good, nice and clean. All right, so love that, super happy with it. If you wanna make the edits again, let's come back here, right? And I can go back to my type tool, right? And then this is highlighted again, very good. And now I can make whatever changes I want. Okay, you can always come back to it. So just think about it as its own separate object. All right, that you can go ahead and click on it. And guess what? I can even move it around if I wanted to, right? Do all kinds of good things to it. All right, so if you wanted to kind of just play with it with different layers, if you have other text on there, you have full control over it, all right? So very good. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just gonna kind of shift this over, but then click on this little guy right here to adjust the alignment of the object, right? To make it so it's going to be perfectly centered within my frame, all right? So you have all the tools you need all right here, but it's a little bit harder to get to because it's not obvious, right? So we're gonna go to the graphics panel here and then we see everything that we need right here, okay? Now, let's see what we can do with a few other things, all right? I wanna actually stay within this essential graphics and let's now see what we can do with this browse option. So this is pretty neat because we're gonna see that Adobe gives us some nice little freebies, all right? It gives us actually a few kind of off the shelf little captions and titles and things like that that we can use. Some of them have little animations on there. Some of them have backgrounds, preset text, you know, things like that. You can see your title here. Just explore these. You'll see some of them a little more creative than others. You know, and then sometimes you're gonna use certain ones versus others. Okay, so let me just go ahead. I'm gonna go to our famous chef, right? And maybe like, I'll just do one of the times that we see him kind of for the longest amount of time. And I wanna put in some, so a caption there, right? And this might be like the caption I decide to use like all the time, right? So you can see there's this kind of lower third situation that you can see something like this for sports teams, right? It's like, okay, it doesn't have to be a sports team. They're just letting you know that that could be something you can use it for. So we'll see, there's a bunch of other ones, maybe something like that, how graphics you wanna get, but it's kinda nice because they do give you, you know, some pretty fancy ones. Okay, so let me just go ahead and find a decent one that we can work with. Okay, that one's not bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this right there in my timeline, it locks in place, and then bam, there you go. All right, not too shabby, didn't have to do too much at all. And if I play this, we're gonna see what happens. Great, I even get a nice little animation out of that, right? Didn't have to do any animation, don't have to know any special things in After Effects or even Premiere. To be able to create that, it does it for me, it's all off the shelf, okay? And again, you can see there's probably about like 50 of them in there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I need to put in my own stuff here, okay? So when I click on this directly, right, and I'm still in my selection tool, Notice how this gets highlighted, and also you're gonna notice that it automatically now takes me to my edit tab, 
Okay, and I can go ahead and change all the different things if I want, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead now and just double click on this. Okay, I'm gonna say Chef Bob. Okay, and then add title here. Okay, so Sushi King SF. All right, and of course I'm gonna come back to my selection tool. And it's as easy as that, right? So then if I play it, let's come back. Let's just watch it as it's leading up into it. Nice. And that looks really cool, really professional. And you can see how long it stays up there. And of course I can change that. I think the default's gonna be about five seconds. So if I don't want that to be so long, if I want it to be even longer than that, I can very, very easily do that. Okay, now if we come back to this, you'll notice because this is one of these off the shelf graphics and text captions, you're gonna see that there's actually quite a bit going on here, right? You can see here, this says shape, right? And then I actually have two layers here. That stuff automatically comes in there. So you may want to explore some of that stuff if you're kind of hungry for, you know, kind of doing things on your own and doing things a little bit differently, right? You can actually see, like if I click on shape, there's a nice little gradient there, right? And a few other options that you might want to explore, okay? So pretty cool stuff just like right off the bat. Okay, now the last thing we're gonna do in this segment, so I wanna talk about how we can bring in kind of a title in the beginning, all right? So if I go over to my beginning right now, it just kind of starts off with this, right? Which isn't so bad, but maybe I wanna do something that's kind of like opening credits or you know, I just wanna have something that's just gonna be with like a black background, all right? That's not super obvious, right? There's not like a black background option for us, hey? But there is something that's very similar to that that's gonna lead us to that place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to here back to our project panel where all our bins are and everything. And we're gonna go over to this little guy right there, right? Something we have not actually used. If you click on that, you're gonna see you get a lot of options here, okay? And in our advanced class, we're gonna go even some more of these like our adjustment layers and a few other things. But what we're concerned with here is something called the color mat because that's what I wanna do. I essentially wanna create a background, right? Or even just think about it like a video file that has nothing on it except for color. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can have a background so I can just put some basic text on there, right? Plain and simple, right? So let's just go ahead and click on that. And then it gives me, you know, the size and everything like that, right? It should match up to my sequence. So I'm gonna click okay. That's gonna ask me, right, very simple, what's the color you wanna have in the background, right? And you can choose whatever color you want, right? If you know your RGB value, right? And some of these other things here, you can do that as well. Totally up to you. I'm gonna choose black, right? That's gonna be nice and easy for me. I click okay, and I'm just gonna call this black BG for titles. And I can use that over and over and over again. Now, you'll notice as soon as I hit okay, this now appears, right? Black BG for titles, right? Now it just exists. It doesn't go into the timeline. So what I need to do, of course, is bring it into the timeline. Now I wanna bring it in so it's before everything else, okay? I don't wanna overwrite anything. I don't wanna you know, put it on top of anything. So what I'm going to do is hold down the control key on my keyboard or the command key on the Mac and just drag it in. And now notice when I drag it in, I let go, it just pushes everything over, right? So it doesn't actually overwrite it, it just inserts it, okay? And of course it's because of that special keyboard key that I press down as I drag it over, right? Which is control or command on the Mac, okay? So now I have this black background. Now, so what I'm gonna do next is very simply, I'm just gonna go over to here to my essential graphics panel. I'm gonna go over here to browse and I'm gonna bring in one of these preset titles. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna drag this in. You're gonna see, very cool, right? And that's gonna be all ready to go. Okay, so let me just go ahead and just drag my playhead over a little bit so I can actually see it. And then very easily, I can just go ahead and double click on the text box. I'm gonna say a Casuto joint production, okay? Very good, and then down here, I'm gonna say 2021. All right, very cool. And then again, you can see I got all kinds of different layers happening over here. I can change my font if you want to, but 
you know, this is all preset. They're giving you a nice little gift so you can choose whatever you want, you know, as a result, or you can just kind of keep it as is, right? Totally up to you. All right. Now you'll notice that um, when I play it, it just does all these nice, cool little animations and all that cool stuff, right? And you'll also notice that I have my little black background, everything. If I decide I don't want this color background anymore, it's very simple to change that. You just double click on the track right there, and this is gonna come up, and let's just say I wanna kinda of do like a kind of a deep color red. I click OK, and you can see how easy that is to change it, and it changes the whole thing. And I play it, and then nice little animation comes in, and then it's gonna transition, bam, just like that. Okay, and we're actually gonna learn about like real transitions in a little bit, so it kind of fades in a little bit more gracefully. But you can see how awesome this is, right? So it's just like, this is really integral to all of your projects, right? Working with text, whether it's gonna be just a title of some kind, right? Maybe something that's gonna have a color backdrop, it's gonna have a, another video backdrop, right? Or potentially like a lower third situation for captions. You know, if you're doing a documentary, something like that, for a variety of different reasons. So you see that it's relatively easy to do, but it can be a slight bit of a challenge to find where all your content is. So you simply just do the T and then you go ahead and you select it out and you can put your stuff in there. But then you need to make sure you go to the graphics panel, go to essential graphics, and then you can see how everything's broken out into two tabs and then you are good to go. All right, now I'm gonna say one quick thing here just to know that like, if something weird is happening where like you can't actually edit your type, right? I'm just gonna give you a quick little note on this. Um, and it could be because your display is not set to your default display for your computer. So Adobe doesn't necessarily respond well in this case. If your display is set to like 125% and it's not like the native resolution, for your computer. So what you could try to do is switch it back to 100%, okay? So you might notice that my screen might look a little bit different than other videos that, that you've seen prior with, within this title. And that is because I changed it back to make it so everything does work. So my, things might look a little bit smaller and that's why, because I normally had it 125% for instructional purposes, but now I've got it for back to 100% so I can actually show you how titles work because ordinarily they would not work. Okay, so word to the wise there, nice little tip in case it's not working for you where you can't actually make any edits. All right, so as always, pause the video, practice it up, have fun hopefully, you're starting to see all of this come together for you working with some of my videos, if you got some of your own videos, but this really kind of culminates everything together, makes it a full piece. All right, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to work with still images. Sometimes you just have photographs and you just wanna bring them in to make a slideshow. Sometimes you might wanna bring them in into your actual video and you wanna incorporate them into the timeline. We did a lesson on that earlier when we exported a frame and we brought something in or you can see where that actually lives as a JPEG. Now, before I show you how to actually do all of this, I want you to see what we can customize a little bit inside of our preferences. So if you're on the PC, you're gonna click on edit and then preferences. And if you're on the Mac, you're gonna click on the premiere menu in the upper left. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to here to the timeline option. When you go to timeline, you're gonna see that there's all kinds of different preset options that you can choose as your own for preferences. What we're gonna focus on here for this lesson is going to be this, still image default duration. How long do you want it to be, right? So it's gonna save you a lot of time for when you bring in your images, right, into the timeline. Do you always want them to be 10 seconds, right? You don't have to change it every time. You can change it right here to be 10 seconds or just three seconds or whatever you want it to be, the default is, so you don't have to make any changes. After the fact, you can do it ahead of time in your preferences, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep it at five seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. Click okay. And then also, by the way, sorry, before I, I leave here, also notice that you have these audio default transitions and also video transition defaults. So we're gonna talk about transitions in just a little bit. So this will be a nice little kind of preview of where to go in case you wanted to change some of these things ahead of time in case it's not coming in how you want it to. Okay, so let me go ahead and click okay. And now let's see how we can bring in our still images. 
Currently, I have an empty timeline. So what I'm going to do is go over to my bin here called Still Images, and you're gonna see I have all of these images that I wanna bring in to make a slideshow. Okay, so pretty simple. I just go ahead and click on the first one, scroll down, hold down the Shift key, and click on the last one. If you wanted to actually see what they look like ahead of time, you can certainly do that. And I can always hold down, the, hit the tilde key, and I can see everything here as well, right? Kind of nice, right? Pretty cool, so I have everything there. Hit the tilde key, and then again, have everything selected, and then just drag it into my timeline. And just like that, I now have all my images here. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit taller so I can see them there, all right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign so I can see, okay, cool. Now I can see what's happening between all of these. So let's just go ahead and hit play. You can see they're gonna come in for five seconds, three, four, and five five and it's going to go ahead and transition to another and another and another right so pretty straightforward right so it's just like okay that just comes in as it is and notice i actually have two of the same images there so no problem there i'm just going to hold down the shift key and then hit delete and then you can see how that ripples and that goes back to there so very good so you can see kind of a realistic experience that you might see here all right so very cool right so now we're gonna keep it like this for right now. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you how we can do transitions, but I'm gonna show you one other thing here before we go. And that's gonna be a tool that's gonna help you really kind of automate the process, but also kind of go through a slightly different, more personalized experience for some of you who already have your things all numbered or you have them sorted in such a way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new sequence. So far, we have actually not created new sequences from scratch. We've been creating sequences from our content, right? From our images, from our video. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to this little new tab here down on the bottom, and we're gonna say new sequence. And you get a lot of kind of like dizzying options here. For right now, we're just gonna keep the default. You can kind of study some of these things here and you can make some changes to them if you want to. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm not even gonna rename this. I'm just gonna go ahead and just say okay. And now you're gonna notice how I have a new sequence here. Okay, in addition to the one that I have here, and of course I could change the name of that, which I will. All right, but you can see I have this blank sequence. What I'm going to do now is use this feature called, you're gonna see it down here, it's going to be automate to sequence. So I'm gonna change my view to list view, and I'm just gonna choose my images here, and then maybe I'm gonna kind of sort them in a certain way, okay, great. And then I have these guys there, let's make sure I don't have two of the same ones again. Okay, good, looks like I do have those two again, so I don't want those. So I'm gonna hold down the control key, command key on the Mac to then deselect that. Okay, very good. So this is in a slightly different setup for me, okay? And again, it could be ways that you have it set up where you have it sorted, you have it ne renamed in such a way. But what we're gonna do is we're going to come down to this little icon where it says automate to sequence. When we click on that, you're gonna see how it gives you this from Explore SF project, the ordering. Do you want it in the selection order or do you want it in the sort order, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the sort order. That's more what I care about. And again, if that's how you're doing it, Right, you may actually want it to be because it's alphabetized or whatever it is or by number, you can do that. You can see here also placement. Do you want it sequentially okay, or at numbered markers? We don't actually have any numbered markers, but know that in the future, if you did have markers, this would actually be really helpful for you. Okay, So that's not something we really talked about to a large degree. But if you wanted to go to the next level with markers, you can see how it's another use for it. Okay, So method. Okay, overwrite, edit. Okay, so right now we don't have anything else in there, so it's not gonna really make a difference whether it's gonna insert or overwrite. Okay, and then we're gonna see here, do you wanna have a little clip overlap? So let's see what that's gonna look like. Okay, and then we're gonna see still clip duration. Okay, use in and out range. Okay, so you're gonna see basically, ultimately what this is gonna look like at the end. Okay, so let's just take a look at these transitions are gonna come in, right? The video transitions, everything we saw prior within our preferences in terms of how many seconds, that's all gonna come in. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, come over to here, all right? And now we're gonna see that when we play it, it comes in the order that I asked it for, right? Slightly different order than before. And you're gonna notice here how it actually automatically comes in with a little bit of a transition this time, even though 
I didn't even really ask for transitions. I didn't even really talk about transitions, anything like that, right? They're all going to be there, right? As a result of me doing this automate to sequence, all right? Now, you also might be wondering, okay, I'm gonna come back to here this time, right? If I wanted to like crop in on one of my images, you can see I can do that as well. Cause some of these, if you notice, are actually maybe a little bit kind of weird or I don't see everything there. It maybe kind of didn't have the same kind of resolution as far as my sequences are concerned and my images, you can fix all that stuff. So again, what I'm gonna do is just simply double click on this. And you remember from when we did our cropping of video, you can do the same thing here, right? Within your still images. So let's go ahead and now I'm gonna bring this down to 10%. And I'm just gonna, I wanna really zoom in on this thing here. So I'm just going to make it so that's really the thing that I want people to focus on. Great. And then, yeah, this is a little bit too far of a shot. I really wanna focus on one part there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, double click it, and then let's go ahead and find our corners there. Okay, that's great. That's nice, a little more detail in there. So you get the picture now, right? So really slick, okay? The fact that I have that kind of control over it relatively simply, relatively easily, okay? now. What we're going to do in these upcoming videos is we're gonna add on a little bit of transitions. We're gonna do it manually, as opposed to how we did it with the automate to sequence. We're gonna bring in a little bit of audio, okay? And we're also going to do some movement around them. So we're gonna go into the effects panel to be able to do that, right? Have them pan across, maybe have them zoom in, okay? So I think maybe one last thing we'll do is just adjust the length of these, right? Just to have a little bit of review of how all that works, right? Just before we move on from here, okay? So of course, if I wanted to stretch this out, it can pretty much do this like indefinitely. If it comes in at your five seconds, I can very, very easily do that. Okay, and if I wanna bring this over here, okay? Notice I have a bit of a problem there. But if I then hold down my control key, notice how that's gonna do it that way, right? You can see that, fantastic. And you can see, great, I can make that extend out. I can make that stand out, right, extend out. All right, so you have that kind of creative control and that type of layout control anytime you want. Okay, just a little footnote, just as some review from what we talked about in the past with video that applies also to our still images. <laughs> okay, so very good. We'll see you in the next video and practice up. In this lesson, we are gonna talk about transitions. So transitions, basically, we're gonna move from one clip into the other in a little bit more of a subtle, kind of graceful sort of smoothness that's gonna just allow the user to have not sort of a jumpy move or shift from one scene to the other. All right, so earlier we saw some transitions, right, when I did that automate to sequence. Now we're gonna be able to do this manually. I'm gonna show you how we can do this with our still images, and then we're also gonna go into video and how to do that, and we're also gonna show you some good keyboard shortcuts that are really, really gonna help you out quite a bit. All right, so where do all of my transitions live when I want to apply a transition. So if we go over to here to the effects tab, okay? So you can see here, this is a new tab that we have not explored yet. When you click on that, you're gonna see a lot of things change, just like how we went to our graphics panel, everything kind of changed. All right, so as soon as I go there, you're gonna notice that on the right-hand side, I get a whole bunch of effect options. And you're gonna see in our upcoming advanced premiere that we're gonna get into a lot more different effects. So we're gonna to touch on just a handful of them here. And in particular, working with the video transition. So you can see that we have a bunch of presets, we have audio effects, we have audio transitions, right? We have video effects and we have video transitions. So if I go ahead and click on this here to expand that out, we're gonna see we have quite a bit of different categories of transitions we can work with. Okay, so if I choose, for example, page peel, notice how there's page peel, page turn. How about wipe? You can see, wow, quite a few there. So these are all kind of different types of transitions that you can do. If I go over here to this dissolve one, you're gonna notice that I have a whole bunch of dissolve ones, and one in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here, has a blue box around it. That's because that is the default that is the default transition, and that's gonna be very important for us in just a few moments to understand what the default is and why that's gonna be important and how we can apply the default very easily and quickly. All right, so let's go ahead now and let's just apply 
any one of these, right? So let's just go ahead and go over to my wipe and I'm gonna choose this band wipe, right? And I'm gonna make it so it's gonna go from here to here, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag and I'm gonna move it so it's kinda like right there in between. And then if I really, really show you here to zoom in, you're going to see that there's now this new transition that exists. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just do kind of plus plus so I can really, really see it. Notice it even says band wipe there. So let's play that and let's just see what it looks like from image to image. Keep your eye on your program monitor. You can see, OK, pretty cool, right? Maybe, maybe not. So if I don't like that, I can just go ahead and select it and then hit delete. So notice that I'm selecting the object of the transition. I'm not selecting the actual clips themselves. Okay, so let's maybe try a different one. Let's go ahead and just try one here. Film dissolve. Okay, very good. Let's try that again. Oh, that's pretty nice. I kind of like that. All right, so lots and lots of different options and definitely lots and lots of ways, I should say, much, much easier to do it than you might expect, right? You just simply just drag it right there where the two clips meet, okay? Now, if I wanted to adjust the length of the transitions, if I double click on the transition itself, you'll notice here it says set transition duration. If you recall from an earlier lesson I showed you in, under the preferences, what the default transition length is. This is making it one second, which is essentially just a half a second on either side. So if you want this to be a little bit longer than that, let's make this two seconds, right? Notice how that goes out a little bit further and you can have a little more of a subtle fade from one to the other. Oh, that's nice, very graceful, very romantic, okay? So really cool, right, to be able to work that way very quickly and easily. Now, notice you can also use the trimming options to be able to do the same thing. So if you only want, you can see how I can do this way, right? You have a little bit more sort of fluidity around that. You can notice what's happening with that, right? The duration is coming up and you can see you can do that way or you can do that way. Okay, so that's kind of nice, right? You can see, all right, very good. Okay, but now that could take a long time to do all of these pretty much like one by one by one, you know, because if you've got a whole slideshow of 100 images, that could take quite a bit of time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this here. I'm just going to go ahead and just remove this transition. And let me just zoom so I can see everything just like that. And I'd like to actually use this cross dissolve, I decided, right? And I'm deciding just because now it's currently at the default. And again, how do I know it's a default? because it's the blue square. How did it become the default is if you right click on any one of these, notice it says set selected as default, right? You can see now that becomes the blue. I'm gonna come over to here and make this. Now this become the blue. Now, why is this gonna be important and how is this gonna help us? There is an amazing keyboard shortcut that is gonna allow us to apply transitions very quickly and easily. And especially if I have everything selected just like that, I can now apply it using that keyboard shortcut, which is, wait for it, Shift D, right? And you'll notice how everything now has that transition. So let's watch it. Nice, that transitions, wait about five seconds or so. Another one comes in, very cool, right? Didn't really have to, okay, love that, pretty great. Now let's just try a different one, okay? So I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna say dip to white. I'm going to make this the default transition, highlight everything all over again, do Shift D. Okay, that now changes. See that? Dip to white. You barely noticed it on the timeline, but in fact, it did change. Okay, so depending on what you're trying to do, right? So really cool. I'll do that one more time. Let's go ahead and highlight everything. And again, I'm going to make this. I'm going to say, let's do our film dissolve again. Make that. Notice again, the blue box. All right, I'm going to do Shift D, and now let's watch it. All right, very good, and that's where I'm going to settle, right where I started. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look how the experience would be working with video. So let's go back to our project, and if you remember, I had a sequence, right? I actually had a sequence folder, right? You can see my sequence bin. 
there that is. And I have this my exploratorium doc, right? Nice and flushed out there. And we can see, let me go ahead and select this, minus, minus, so I can see everything there. Very cool, getting nice and filled out. And it might be cool to have a little transition kind of going from like here to here, so it's a little more kind of subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select both of these. And then if I just do Shift D, notice how that gets applied nicely and easily, right? And let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so I can see that there. And now let's watch it. That's going to kind of zoom in. Actually, let me make them even better to have this be a little bit bigger. All right, let's go 25%. There we go. All right, and then you may want to actually adjust this, right? So like this maybe doesn't transition so much over here, right? Or maybe it only transitions on one side. Just notice how easy that is to be able to affect that. See that? So really cool. Now that's going to be on this side. Yeah, I like that. So then that part comes in, all right? And then you can certainly do it on here as well. So let's go ahead and select these two. And I'm just gonna drag this into here. All right, so it's making sure everything gets affected. Nice. Okay, so we have a little bit more kind of like visual interest. All right, let's just do a couple more. Let's just see what else could benefit from this, right? We're just kind of transitioning from one scene to the other. And sometimes you, know, you don't wanna go crazy with the transitions, just to just kind of keep in mind you wanna really kind of make it so it's communicating something, maybe make make it so it's going to be, you know, part of the sort of, you know, energy and sort of style that you're creating, right? So you have certain kind of music, you might want to match the transition to that, right? You don't want to be jumping all over the place with transitions just to be able to show you have transitions. So let's just kind of keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so I have these two here and I want to basically make this go into there. Okay, and it tells me here, it says, insufficient media, the transition will contain repeated frames. So let's just see what that's gonna look like, right? Because sometimes if your media is too small or too short, then it may not know what to do with it, okay? But that's totally fine. Pretty happy with that, right? Nothing big is happening. Now, what I want you to notice is that because I'm working with video and I now click on my transition, notice how I'm getting this kind of split screen up on top. It's showing me kind of where it's gonna kind of come and go to, right? Do you see that there? So I can see where the split is going to happen, right? So you can see that, that like, okay, it's gonna go from here, right, to there. And when I hold my mouse down on this, it actually shows me that kind of split screen. And let's just go ahead and maybe finish it off for the rest of these. Let's now just do transition just because we can on all the clips here. And you might see that you're gonna get that insufficient message there, okay? but that's okay. I think we're okay with that. They're just letting us know that, again, the transitions might be a little bit longer. That's not gonna be a lot of footage to show. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at it now. Let's see. I'm gonna transition from that to that. And then the next footage, slow motion, goes into the next thing, that's cool. Pretty neat. All right, and this could be a good thing if you're fading out or fading in, you might wanna try different ones. Like if you're starting off where you're introducing your new content, maybe you wanna do one of these like, you know, dip to whites, right? That could be a good one where it's like, hey, you know, lightness is coming, right? Or you're dipping to black using, hey, this is now over. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a different look that you want to create. So if I, now just go ahead and select this and I hit delete. Okay, I'm just gonna go and get rid of that for the sound as well. And then I could just do one kind of ad hoc right here. Okay, and then bam, there you have it. And then we can watch what dip to black does. And then maybe I even wanna make that a little bit longer. Okay, so it's gonna be just kind of a nice slow fade out. Okay, or maybe even longer than that. Or I can double click on it again, maybe make it go a little bit longer than that. Okay, so let's just do it like that way. 
one more time. Let's keep an eye on it. And then slow fade to black. Okay, very cool. And of course you do the same thing with audio transitions if you like, if you want your audio to fade out equally. And we're gonna talk about audio in just a little bit. All right, so have fun, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna do a quick overview on how we can work with um, certain kind of effect controls to create movement. So um, if we look at our slideshow here, we can see, yeah, kind of nice. However, when it's coming in and out, it's a little bit boring, a little bit static. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move things around a little bit, because maybe we're gonna have them kind of pan from left to right. Maybe we wanna have them zoom in a little bit, have a little bit more control over what people see. Okay, so in order to do that, we've got to go to a completely different panel again. All right, so we've been working with effects, we've been working with editing, okay, we've been working with graphics. Now we're gonna move over to one called effect controls. You see that there? So here is effect controls here. And then there's a lot really going on here. It could be a little bit intimidating at first. So we're only gonna explore just a handful of these for right now, but you can see what can we affect we can affect the motion, right? Meaning the position and the scale. Where is it on the X and Y values? Where is it on the scale in terms of the size of it? Okay, but now what we're gonna learn about is something called keyframes. Because if you think about what a keyframe is, it's basically just saying, hey, it's gonna start off in one place, that's your keyframe number one, and it's gonna end up in another place, and that's gonna be keyframe number two. It's essentially going to kind of fill in the gaps between those two points from beginning to end. So we're gonna see here that I'm gonna have my ability to then make this kind of go from one thing to the next, right? So let me go ahead and just zoom this out back to 10 so I can see what I can do at first. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back over here to the far left and notice how my scrubber, my playhead scrubber matches what I see on my timeline down below to what I see up on top over here. Okay, so that's great. So notice that I'm all the way on the far left because that is where my first kind of movement is going to happen, if you will, right? So let's make sure, let's make sure that you know we're there. We're pretty happy with that. We're good. And now we're going to now play around with the actual movement of things, all right? So the first thing I wanna do before I set up anything is I'm gonna click on this little stopwatch thing. So I'm telling Premiere that like something is going to happen in terms of like a keyframe and a time going from one thing to the other. So I'm gonna click on that and you're gonna see how that gets kind of lit up. And then you'll also notice how I have this little blue thing that lights up. It's saying that there's a keyframe that's there. And if you'll notice here, there's another little kind of like diamond there that's also telling me that a keyframe has kind of like happened, if you will, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way to the end of my clip. I'm just gonna hit the down arrow, but then I'm gonna come back one, right? It's kind of a nice little trick because if you go down, if you go down all the way, you're actually going all the way to the next clip. You don't want that. You wanna to go to the next clip minus one. So therefore, it's going to it's going to now affect the end of that first clip. Now, I can do a few things here. I could work with my positioning by going to my, you know, is it my 1296 or 968? I don't even really know what those things mean, but I can go ahead and click and drag on those to then make it move. Okay, what's it gonna be? Like that, okay, maybe that's what's happening. Sure, potentially, right? But, you know, I might wanna actually do things a little more kind of, I don't know, sort of fluidly, right? It's like, well, you know what? Or more sort of like concretely or tangibly. So I can just simply click and drag. And if I hold down the shift key, I know for sure I'm getting it straight. And notice I'm now working with my X axis, all right? So we can see, okay, that's pretty cool. And now if I were to watch this, I know it's gonna go from left to right. See that? I've now created that movement. So let's take a look at what's actually happening. I have keyframe number one here keyframe number two over here, right? So keyframe number one starts off at 1296 and just watch how the numbers grow, grow, grow as we go over here to keyframe number two. Okay, so pretty cool, right? So it's very easy to do that. Let's now continue on with that where I'm gonna go to my scale because I actually want my scale to be a little bit bigger because it's not taking up a whole lot of the screen at this point. So I'm gonna come back to the beginning 
I'm gonna click on my little clock, all right? And I'm gonna make it start off a big. I actually want it to be big the whole time. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here, double click, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that nice and big. I might wanna see what it's gonna look like. All right, and now you can see I'm not losing any information by the time it comes over to here. It doesn't completely die off, okay? And if I wanted to, I can always come back to my positioning at this place, and then I can even control it still. See that? So I'm coming back to position. So notice how position and scale are both highlighted in blue to tell me that, okay, this is where some keyframe sort of movement is going to happen, okay? So let's now see here. We take a look, you can see my position is gonna be at 1386 and my X, okay? And then it's gonna start off 162%, right? So instead of 100%, it's gonna be 162, but it's gonna remain at 162. I don't necessarily want it to grow in this case. So let's just take a look at it. It's beautiful, that's great, I love that. And then the transition happens, okay, great. And now let's try to find something else we can work with, right? Slightly different modification on our movement. So I have now this little snake. So let's say, for example, I wanted to kind of zoom, starting off zooming in on the head of the snake, and then I'm going to kind of zoom out so we see the whole kind of broad perspective of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the down arrow there. And I can see I'm still on the frame, right? I'm beginning from the frame itself, and then I'm going to now work with my scale okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on scale and in this case i'm actually going to start off by again clicking on the little stopwatch and i'm going to zoom in just by adjusting it here a little more manually okay so to kind of be a little bit let's just go ahead and want to rotate it come on premiere let's try to find maybe another spot you know, she can rotate it. It's a nice little thing you could do. Okay, good. And now let's go ahead and start off again. It can be a little bit tricky getting that corner. There we go. And if it is a little tricky, don't worry about it because guess what? We can always play around with these numbers here, right? So I can always click and drag to kind of move this over just like that, right? And I can always click and drag to move it this way as well. And notice how that's affecting both the X and the Y position just the same, okay? So I'm going to make both of these start off as a keyframe at this place, right? But where do I want it to ultimately end up? So I'm going to create this kind of pan and zoom effect where we're starting off looking at the snake and then we're going to pan out, right, at some point around here. Okay, and again, I'm gonna use my trick down and then back one. All right, now let's take a look at what's that's, that's what we need to do, okay? So now, ultimately, I'm thinking about like, what do I want my viewers to see at this point? So I'm gonna go ahead and double click back on there. All right, and now let's go ahead and bring that in. And I'm just gonna just use this guy since I can't see the bounding boxes, no big deal. Drag this in. Make that a little bit smaller again. Kind of bring it into the frame. And as I'm doing this, I want you to notice all these two keyframes have now appeared for both the position and the scale. So I'm able to have this nice effect for panning and zooming, right, for both my X and Y and also my scale. So let's just go ahead and see what that's gonna look like now. So now transition and then, okay, cool, there's a snake. And then, whoa, how big is it? How big is it, right? Gotta stay tuned. Whoa, that's a pretty big snake. Wow, holy cow, right? So we're now creating that sort of drama, that little suspense through that kind of like slow pan and zoom. All right, so this is a nice little foundation for the concept and application and process around keyframes and working with your effect controls. This is really just the beginning, but once you kind of get that concept and process down, it'll help you immeasurably with just an untold amount of things that you can do within Premiere. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice all this stuff up, go to your effect controls. Um, you can do the same thing with images if you want to, you can do the same thing with videos if you want to, right? So mix it up, you can see the process is essentially the same. All right, so we'll see you in the next video. 
Up until this point, we have discussed all kinds of video editing tools. We've discussed our interface. We've discussed different effects and transitions and rippling and all kinds of good stuff there. But we have not talked about audio so much. We've seen our audio in action. We've unlinked our audio from our video. But we have not learned about how we can bring in our audio and make some edits to our audio. So let's just see how we can do that. Just like how we brought in our images and brought in our other video clips, it's going to be just as simple to do that. So I have within my bins here, I have a folder here called audio and I have one audio file and I simply just want to bring that in. Now, if I double click on that, I can listen to it if I want to. Okay, I can even do my ins and outs on that just the same way. If I only want a certain part, I can move that around, just do that over there. If I know a certain part that I want, I can very, very easily do that. Now, if you recall, if I'm also working with a video, but I only want the audio part, I can use this guy right here to say, hey, listen, only drag in just the audio. Okay, so remember all kinds of different options to be able to do that. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my ins and outs. So I'm going to right click, clear in and out. And I'm going to bring in this audio. And this audio is going to go underneath here, my slideshow that we've been working on. So very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and drag that in. And then notice it's going to go right there in from A1 to A1. Now keep in mind also, if I had some other audio there, I could bring it into A2 and I can even... I can set the track to basically make it so it's gonna to go to that particular track, right? To make it so it's gonna automatically go to A2 or A3 so it doesn't override any of those other tracks, okay? So now you can see, here we are. I'm going to play that. All right, and I like it. All right, but now let's go ahead and see what we can do to maybe not have all this audio over here. I can very easily trim that and treat it just like I would if it were a video. Okay, and I just go ahead and trim that and then it's gonna end at the same time as all of my video does. Okay, now keep in mind if I decided to like extend this, right, and if I wanted to extend this out, it's still here. Even though I've trimmed it, I can still extend this out just as far, just the same way as I do with my video and my images, I can extend the audio out just the same, as long as there's information left, right? So if, if my video is like 45 minutes, but my audio is only 10 minutes, I can only go so far. So of course I can bring that audio back out if I want to and then repeat it, okay? So that's how we can work with our audio within our stills. So now let's just take a look at our Exploratorium a video here or sequence that we've been working on and you can see here I've got quite a bit going on here and do I need these maybe I do maybe I don't so I need to decide what I'm going to be doing with some of these right so do I actually want to remove some of this audio that I don't necessarily want okay so if I listen to you know if I start off here so I can actually hear like some voices back there and stuff. I don't really need those. Okay, so if you recall that when I select one of my clips here, notice that these are still linked up with each other. So if I right click on that, I'm gonna say unlink, and now I can then isolate this and then delete that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one too because I don't need that one also. That one's separate, left over from before. Okay, but now you can see when I play it, all right, so what I wanna do is I wanna actually take this same audio and put it there here on the audio three track, right? So that's gonna be below everything else. Now, are they going to interfere with everything else inside? Are they gonna compete with each other? That remains to be seen. So certain things I might want, certain things I don't want. So let's just see what we can do. Let's just go ahead and bring this in, bring this down. And now let's go ahead and play it. Cool, I like that. All right, it's a good way to start. Okay, now, so you can see that, yeah, it works pretty well, but there's certain elements that are gonna be necessary, but maybe I don't want them to be so dominating, right? So what I can do now 
is just bring down the audio to a certain extent on parts of these. And I can maybe even raise the audio on some of these parts to a certain extent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and hit the tilde key. So now I can have a nice bigger version of my audio that I can see and work with, all right? And if you recall, if I can do my Alt plus plus plus, notice I can actually make that a little bit bigger to work with there. So that's kind of nice. So you can see, all right, great. I can then now work with this little line right there that we have not talked about too much. And all that's gonna do is allow me to adjust the volume on that particular part right there if I want to, right? Or if I wanted to increase or decrease the volume here, I can do that same thing, all right? Now, you will notice, just so we understand about how you know the sound works, there's an L and an R in there. These are set in stereo, right? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But these are actually set in stereo, so that's a left and a right. So sometimes you actually may have a mono where it's not going to be left and right, but it does give you a little bit of control sometimes in terms of you know what sound is coming in from what side or whatever it is to kind of have a little more control so they're isolated out from each other. Okay, so just so we have a good idea of kind of what we're looking at here. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the plus sign to actually make this spread out even more. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of see what I can do with this. So let's just back up a little bit and then it's coming in. Okay, that's a little loud. So let's just go ahead and make this a little bit lower. So notice where my mouse is right there. I'm just gonna bring that down just a little bit. Okay, and now not so bad. Good. And I have this one competing with it. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. And then notice how that jumped up a little bit, right? So I probably all of these, right, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Okay. And I also, again, want to decide, hey, listen, do I even want these to begin with? So I'm going to watch these, right? Are they competing? Are they adding anything to my story? Right. Totally up to you. Okay. So now I'm going to hit the tilde key and I'll watch it and listen to it. So let's go ahead and do the same bit of editing here while I'm in a smaller version of this. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. So you can see how easy all that stuff is here. And then notice that there's also some transitions here. So you can have the sound fade in and out like I showed you from our effects panel. Okay, now let's take a look at this. And I want you to notice that as I'm actually playing this on the right hand side, you're gonna see your little channels going up and down on there. So it's gonna give you some indication about kind of what's going on. So let's go ahead and play it. It's a little bit lower. And then you can see the next one's gonna come down a little bit more, which I actually prefer. So I want a little bit, something subtle, and you can see you can do this all day long. All right, now let me just show you one quick thing, and this might kind of take you to the next level of audio editing and understanding if this ever comes up. In our advanced class, we get a little bit more into audio, but let me just go ahead and right click on this, and I'm gonna go over here to my audio channels where you can see what's going on here. Sometimes you may or may not want to have you know both or one or whatever it is, and maybe if you're showing here as mono and you wanna play with it a little bit, you can very easily do that. Okay, so you can see how I can turn this on or off, right? So there's gonna be times when you're gonna to want to do that in case maybe you're getting like a hiss on one channel and you wanna actually say, hey, listen, I don't want that hiss. You can actually make it so it's gonna be like two lefts, right? We don't necessarily have anything like that, but if that does come up, this is a good way to address that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel that. And now one last time, let's go ahead and play it. Chef Bob. Excellent. Very good. So hopefully this helps. You can see how easy it is on a lot of levels to just bring in the audio, how easy it is to adjust the volume, how you can unlink and separate out your audio from your video. So lots of things you can do and hopefully pretty straightforward on how to do it. All right. So go ahead, pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. 
Believe it or not, we have made it all the way to our output phase of our project. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully you have made it this far and you've either worked on creating something from this bit of video and audio that we've got here for you, or maybe you're working on something on your own with your own content. So what we're gonna do is learn how we can just simply export this and render it as a video format that can be available to put on a website, publish it to YouTube or Vimeo or whatever you plan to do. All right, and you can see it's relatively straightforward. Premiere does all the heavy lifting. And I'm gonna simplify this process for you just so you don't have really too much to think about. But for those of you who have very specialized needs, I'm gonna show you the window you can go to as far as what choices you need to make, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple for our purposes here when we do our exporting. So I have my Exploratorium doc video and it is now ready to be rendered. So how do I do it? I'm gonna go over to here to my file menu, click on file, and you're gonna see mostly way down here is export. And all I'm gonna do now is just choose media. If I do that, dialog box is gonna pop up and you're gonna see here, all I need to do is tell it what format I want to export it as. And I also wanna say, okay, what's gonna be the name for it and the location. Now you can see it's also giving me a summary of you know where it's gonna live and all that good stuff here and even stuff around my sound, right? And you also have a few other options here that's gonna tell you some bits of information also that maybe you even wanna change some things at this point. But again, we're gonna keep it relatively simple. And then finally at the end, you just simply click on export. So a good standard to go by is this H264. When you click on that, you're gonna see we get a lot, a lot of options here. Okay, some older formats that are really not as useful like AVI and even MOV files um, and some of these things. And maybe that's gonna come up for you, but this is typically kind of your industry standard at this point. And it is the same as an MP4. So when you do see H264, you should really be thinking MP4, right? So it's a certain standard of MP4. Okay, so you're gonna get a really good high resolution. So it's gonna bring everything together in terms of your audio, your video, and you will have a quality output. All right, and then again, you're gonna see this area here for output name. So when I click on that, that's gonna take me to, okay, so where do I want to export this to? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and export this to my Premiere Pro intro folder here. It's gonna be an MP4, that's great. All right, so now I've set what the location is gonna be. I'm gonna keep it at the same name as where it started. All right, and then again, if you want to explore some of these things here, you can see if there's any kind of effects that you're needing to be working with or anything like that, just know what these options are. If you need to change the codec or anything like that, just know that the options are here within this export window. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it as is. And then finally, we're pretty much good to go as far as our purposes are concerned. And we're to come down here to export. So I click on export. And as this is waiting, you can see over here in the lower left, it tells me the size it's gonna be 202 megabytes. So just good to know that before you actually, you know, commit to something. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video while we're waiting for this, and I'll come right back right when it's about to be done. Okay, and we're back with about five seconds left to go. And here we are, that wasn't so bad. But just know, of course, for a longer video, it's gonna take more time. Okay, there it is, it tells me here, your video has been exported successfully. So let's go ahead and get to my folder so I can see it here. There it is, Exploratorium doc. And I can go ahead and play that. It's gonna open up to my default MP4 player. Two minutes, 35 seconds, and let's see it. That looks very cool, I'm very excited, high quality, coming together, and I can very easily upload that to my favorite streaming service, put it onto my website, send this to Exploratorium, do whatever I'm gonna do to it. Okay, so pretty awesome. So congratulations, well done, and give that a shot, all right? So stay tuned for our future classes on Premiere. Hopefully this is a good foundation for you. And uh, congrats once again, have fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Let's now continue our conversation on customizing our window. So 
let's go ahead and open up to any file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up to a video here and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this here. Now, I want you to notice that within both the source panel and also the program panel, you're going to see this little wrench right here and also right there. Okay, now that wrench is gonna allow us to do some customization to bring up certain elements that we may wanna see on the screen. Okay, so what are those things? You click on that and there's a ton of options that are gonna come up here for you. Many of these things you probably will never use. Some of them you will realize that, oh my God, how did I live without these? Okay, so as an example, let's just go ahead and first of all, bring up, for example, our ruler. I click on that, you can see, oh, that's really nice, right? So when is this gonna be important? Potentially you're bringing this into a website and you need to know exactly how big the video is, right? You need to know exactly how this is going to fit in to a page of sorts, right? So you need to know, okay, what is going to be the width and height of this in pixels, okay? That's great, very nice. So let's go ahead and add on another thing. Let's bring up the guides. So I click on that and nothing really happens. But if any of you have ever worked in other Adobe programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, you'll note that you can actually create guides by simply using the ruler, by clicking and dragging, and then just saying, hey, listen, this is where a certain element is going to go, right? So let's just say, for example, I want to bring in some type. I want to have like a lower thirds type of thing. I can say, okay, great. This is where my content is gonna go. So I've created a guide now to be able to actually show that and then I can use this to say, listen, this is where my text is going to go. Very good, okay? So I can go in and click on that and say, listen, I don't wanna show the guides anymore and it goes away. Click on that and I can say, listen, I don't wanna show the ruler anymore, okay? Let's go ahead and continue on with this. I'm gonna click on my little wrench and now what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna click on safe margins. Click on that and you're gonna see what comes up here. Now, this is gonna tell us now what may not be shown, right, on a screen. So if you're gonna have important information here, you wanna be within these safe margins, right? So they're pretty much like telling you kind of where these things might get cut off. So you wanna be aware of that. So if you do have kind of a, a history of this and you wanna, wait, why does this keep getting cut off? What's happening here, right? These are gonna be really helpful for you. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Okay, let's go ahead and add on some other elements to our program panel. So if I click on my wrench again, you'll notice there's this option for time ruler numbers, right? So you can see here's your ruler, but that's not really giving me a lot of information. I might wanna see that a little more clear in terms of where I am here. So you can see if someone tells me, let's move it right to you know 16 seconds, I can see, bam, there it is. Of course, I have my timestamp right here, but this gives me kind of reinforcement of what's what and where things are, right? If I did not have that before, so I can click on my wrench to add that on there, all right? And then the last thing I wanna talk about is your playback resolution. You can see here, this is, it's saying it's coming back in half resolution. You can see, I can also see that here as well. So you can see the difference there. Now, what does that actually mean? Essentially, it is not showing my video in the full original resolution as it's going to when I finally render it, why might it not actually show it in full? It's to basically save on my computer's processing power, right? So it's gonna say, hey, listen, you know, we know you got potential, but for right now it's not necessary, but I could turn that to full. And you can see I can have that, also change that here as well and change that, okay, just the same. Playback resolution, I can change that to one of these options here. Okay, and again, you have all the same options here within your source panel as well. All right, so go ahead and just play around with those in a little bit. We're gonna come and see how we can actually customize some of these buttons as well in the program panel as well as our source panel. Now, Premiere gives us some pretty good options in terms of keyboard shortcuts. It gives us some really good options in terms of all these little buttons here to be able to do any number of things here. All right, but now this list is by no means exhaustive. There are a lot of other icons and features and tasks hidden in this little plus sign and also this little plus sign. So if you are not a keyboard shortcut person or if you wanna just know what else is available, you might want to think about opening up to this little plus sign here to say, 
let's just see what other options we can add. So we are now currently inside of our button editor. Okay, so you can see some of the buttons are gonna look familiar to you, right? You can see there's your in point, your out point, and some other things is clear, right? And also clear out, right? Just like that. Now, you'll notice that as you move your mouse over, it's also telling you the keyboard shortcut, right? We've already know this one, the in and the out, but what about clearing the in? Oh, cool, look at that. Control Shift I, and of course you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Command Shift I. But you can see that if you wanted to add some of these things on here, you absolutely could, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this one right here. And you'll notice that I'm just gonna move this right there, and I'm just gonna drag this, just like that, all right? So really nice, you can see I'm starting to start customizing my button panels here. Now, you'll notice that there's some other ones that you know may have value to you, right? We've already got overwrite, we've already got our insert, okay? There's our safe margin, right? What we talked about in our last video. If you wanna have that there all the time, you can do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now let's go over to here to our program panel and do the same thing. I'm gonna click on the plus sign and you're gonna see how maybe we have a few different options here because this is our program panel a little bit different, right? Because again, this is gonna be for rendering it. We may have different options that we can't necessarily do within our source panel. Okay, so you might see some options for our VR. You're gonna see some different effects things here. You can see there show our rulers and a few other things on here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do some of the things that we already talked about. Let's go ahead and just drag this. I like to show my rulers all the time. I also like to have my guides up there all the time. Cool, and I don't wanna to have to go and click on the little wrench every single time. It makes it nice and easy to be able to do this. So you might wanna explore these. There's my safe margin, okay? You can go ahead and export frames, okay? If you're working with multi-camera. So, so many different options you can explore. And as you get deeper and deeper into the program, you're gonna to wanna to come back here and see what options are available to you to be able to make it a lot easier for you to access these and also implement them. Okay, so you'll also notice that there are keyboard shortcuts associated with these. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that when I click on the wrench, it doesn't necessarily tell me the keyboard shortcuts. But when I move my mouse over, this new icon that I just added on as a button, you can see, oh, there is just Control R, so that's really nice, and I just learned a whole new thing. What's this one? Oh, it's gonna be Control and the semicolon. Oh, very nice, and it comes right back to the guy that I created earlier. Pretty cool. All right, so we get a little added bonus there, right? It tells us that. And now that we're maybe accustomed to the keyboard shortcut, we can then go ahead and remove it. So let's just go ahead and click on the plus sign. And then I can go ahead and just drag this out. I don't need it anymore, okay? And if you wanna reset it back to where it was, you can simply just click on reset layout and it goes back to where it was when we first started, okay? So this is really all about you taking control over the program, control over your documents, control over your process, okay? So I just learned one last thing here is I wanna get rid of that guide, so I'm just gonna do control semicolon, that goes away. Control R for ruler, and that goes away. Coming back full circle, all right? So get used to that, get your flow down. I know we're already advanced at this stage and you're probably chomping at the bit for more stuff, and we'll get to that right away. See you in the next video. In this video, we're gonna talk about transitions and do a little bit of basic review, but then go a little bit more complex with some of our options within transitions. So we have a sequence here that I've created called Iceland, and you're gonna see here how we've got one, two, three, four clips, and I wanna be able to transition them going from one beautiful waterfall into this geothermal activity. is going to these beautiful horses, and then it's gonna to go to something else. Okay, so I wanna be able to make a nice little transition that's gonna go into all of these. Now, how do I get to my transitions? You're gonna find all your transitions in the effects panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on effects, and you can see there it is right there. Now, if you unfurl to this little section here where it says video transitions, you're gonna find all of your video transitions right there. Now, you can always do a search anytime. This is the same thing for any of these panels that have multiple options, and you can go ahead and just do a search for it. So if I knew that I was gonna find, let's just say, dip, you can see, bam, there it is, dip. 
right? I'm gonna go ahead and just say cross and you can see, bam, there's my cross dissolve. Now you will notice that this transition, right? Has a little blue box around it where the rest of them do not. That means that is the default transition. And why is that important? It means that I can do a keyboard shortcut to apply that. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight both of these and what's my default keyboard shortcut is gonna be Control D. And you can see, bam, as I do that, this now is gonna pop up and just watch it transition into it very nicely. Okay, and that's gonna be my cross dissolve. Now, if I wanted something else to be my default, let me go ahead and open this up. It's very easy to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up to my transitions. Okay, and then here we are. And let's say, for example, I want it to be dip to white. So if I right click on that, I pretty much just get one option. And now that is going to be my default. You can see there it is dip to white. And then all I need to do now is just simply either click and drag that on there. Or what did we just learn about? We learned about the keyboard shortcut of controller command D. And now that is going to be my transition. Okay, so depending on what kind of effect you're trying to get. Now, I want to show you kind of preemptively um, an error that you may see with transitions. Okay, so let me just go ahead. I'm just going to highlight both of these right here. I'm going to do Control or Command D, and I'm going to get an error message. Insufficient media. This transition will contain repeated frames. So it seems a little scary, and it seems like it's not going to work. But let me just show you. If I click OK, you'll notice here, right, this looks a little bit different, right? compared to this one, right? You see how this one is solid. This one has a little kind of like zebra stripes going on there. Okay, they're telling you essentially that because you're sort of at the end of this media clip, there's not a whole lot for it to, to sort of go off of when it's transitioning from one clip to the other. So it really just depends on kind of how meticulous you wanna be, but typically the naked eye won't be able to tell that it's going to repeat some of the frames. So if you really take a look at it, you'll see that it's going to kind of just do a little bit of a still shot of what we have here, right? You can see it's gonna kind of just add on some frames to be able to kind of make up the difference. You really can't tell the difference there at all, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that just by simply selecting it and then hitting delete. All right, now the way to get rid of that is to simply make it so you've got a little bit of wiggle room to play around with. Now, how do I know that this is the end of the clip? I want you to notice here that there is this little triangle there, right? It's telling me that this is pretty much the whole clip right there. Now, if I hold down the control key and you can see now, I do not have a triangle there on the left-hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing, hold down the control key and click and drag that way, right? You can see it gets rid of it on that side okay so depending on what you want to do right so let's just go ahead now i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that side you can see that's great and now good now i have no issues on this side right you can see how there's no triangle to have it indicate to me that that there's no footage for it to work with okay so let's go ahead and take care of this one as well okay and bam i should not have any issues at all. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these and just do control or command D and see that no issues at all. Okay. So in case you ever see that, don't freak out. Not a big deal. Even if it does come up and even if you don't want to fix it, it's just basically telling you that you're at the end of that clip. All right. Let's now go next level here. Let's go ahead and just see what's going on with these individual transitions. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just watch this. You can see as I kind of like go right from here to here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click directly on the transition itself. And you'll notice now I have this option under my effect controls to basically see kind of my A and B comparison and also to be able to control my transition in terms of where it's gonna begin and end and also my duration and also my alignment. All right, so we're gonna start getting into a little bit more advanced stuff here. So at the, at the most basic level, you might wanna just increase the length, right, of it, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just gonna type out 300, okay? And that's now going to be three seconds, okay? You can see that made it a little bit. Let's go ahead and just type out 400. That's gonna be a little bit longer, okay? So let's go ahead and watch it. 
a nice slow fade out like whoa wow okay and we just got you know dusted out there like what are you trying to communicate okay pretty cool so you can do that all right now the alignment okay what are we talking about in terms of alignment the best way to understand it is to look at this part of the panel right here this is my geothermal clip this is my horses clip notice how this guy is right in the middle of them okay that is my alignment to show where is the transition going to begin and end right now it's perfectly in the center of the two but if i click here i'm going to say start at the cut and you can see what it does here okay right at the cut that's when it starts so it's like okay so do i even want it to do that it's like okay see that see that so it's a little bit more clouding over the beginning of the horses okay let's go ahead and try it a different way let's go ahead and say end at cut and then notice what that does that goes onto the other side of it go ahead and play that okay you see that that if you were to play this i'm not sure if you could hear the audio the audio actually comes in a little bit later right than it did the first time right so you can see it might appear to be the same to the naked eye but it is actually delaying which part comes out before or after to transition itself now of course all this can be done manually as well so you can see how you can even move this if you like to make it kind of perfect just like okay where's that going to come where's it when's the transition going to come and then when's it going to fade in and fade out okay so let's go ahead and try that with another one so you can see it can be very similar so i'm going to go ahead and just select this transition hit delete and I'm going to do a different one. Okay, let's just go ahead and do this film dissolve. Let's go ahead and drag that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to make that a little longer. I'm going to type out 300. You can see that gets a little bit bigger. And you can see now as I... That's a very different one. Very nice. Okay, nice fade in, fade out. All right, so you have really a lot of control over these. All right, so practice all that now let's go ahead and go to maybe a different type of transition so we can see potentially how we might be able to actually get more options potentially depending on what the transition that you're going to be doing so i'm just going to go ahead and maybe get rid of this one and i'm going to go over here to my iris all right i'm just going to go ahead and just drag this to iris box okay and i'm going to make this maybe a little bit longer i'm going to type out 400 Okay, and I'm gonna bring this so it's a little bit bigger so you can see. And I want you to notice that underneath all these options here, I have now the ability to customize this because this particular type of transition allows me to have different types of features and properties around it, like a border width, a color, I can make it go in reverse, right? All kinds of different things you can do. But let's now go back to the actual transition so we can see what that does. Okay, now I want to be able to customize that. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to scroll down this time. I'm going to say my border width. You can see that border starting to come in, just dragging over that. It's going to get a little bit thicker border color let's just make it red so we can really see it and you can see right kind of interesting right so maybe you want to do things a little bit differently so let's go ahead and try that and there's my transition like it says cap Okay, so you know you can see you can get a little creative with these, right? It's a transition, but it's like it's kind of giving birth to the next frame, you know. So it really looks like, you know, it's kind of coming out of nowhere. It's not like a fade in or fade out. So it's a little different, and we've also framed it, right, to really kind of get the eyes focused on it. So you want to kind of pay attention to these things because some of them can be a little bit hidden down below. All right, so let's go ahead and try reverse this time. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now it's just swallowing up the image and it's going in the other direction. Okay, so a lot of creative options here. Okay, so 
play around with it, right? Just know that there's a lot more than meets the eye. Know these keyboard shortcuts, right? Play around with some of these other video transitions. Come and play with the duration, play with the alignment, okay? And then some of them may even have other options for you to play around with in terms of border sizes and things like that, okay? So pause the video, practice, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about something called subclips. Now, subclips are gonna be useful when you want to use a clip over and over and over again and have quick and easy access to it. So typically, you're gonna start off by having an in and out point for your clip, and you're going to want to save it as a subclip and then reuse it over and over again, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm going to, let me just go ahead and get my stuff all set up here and you'll notice here I have a subclip folder where I'm going to save part of what's in this video as a subclip and put it into this bin. So watch what happens now. I'm going to go ahead and play this, hit the space bar. And I know I want to go from here to about here. Okay. Love that. I want to use that over and over again. So let's come back to the beginning. I'm going to hit I for in and then wait for it to be about maybe four or five seconds or so. That's great. Now I wanna make this a subclip so I can use it over and over and over again in a variety of different places, okay? So how do I make it into a subclip? If we go over to here to clip, you'll notice that there's this option for make a subclip and there's also this control or command U and then bam, this is gonna pop up saying, hey, let's make this a subclip, okay? So I'm gonna say, flying elf okay that's great now we're going to talk about what this is in just a second right restrict trims to sub clip boundaries okay, i'm going to keep that checked for right now that's going to be your default i'm going to go and click okay and you can see here is this flying elf that comes in okay bam there that is right and it doesn't affect the original it just basically extracted out one little bit of it right there so i can use it anytime so i'm going to go ahead and come into here and then I'll be able to then open this up. Okay, and you're gonna see when I play it, it's just gonna be that four second clip, right? So now it's independent of the original, okay? Which is pretty neat. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into the sequence, right? And you can see, bam, there that is, okay? Pretty neat, okay? And I could use this anywhere else, right? If I had another one that was happening, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my sequences, I have one called Iceland. Let's go ahead and open that up. Notice I have two tabs. I'm gonna bring this in to here. You can see, very cool. I can use that over and over and over again in a variety of different sequences as much as I want, right? So you can see it's gonna make it much more efficient for you. So a lot of people will do that where they might have you know, different types of content they want to be able to use repeatedly, or, or maybe you're going to use it to stay organized with different content as you're viewing it. You're saying, let's make that a subclip. And it's a really great way to also label your content. Let's say you're doing an interview, and then you might want to just say, hey, listen, here's an in and out point of that one thing that they talked about, you know, when, you know, where they were from, their experience in the war, the time that they were, you know, playing in front of 50,000 people at Yankee Stadium. Cool. That's the part I want to take out. And then it suddenly becomes its own identity. Okay, so there's a lot of different reasons to do it. Okay, now let's go ahead and do that one more time. And this time I'm going to do it for another Iceland clip. Okay, so let's go over here to our waterfall here. Okay, another one. All right, and let's go ahead and see where do I want to watch this. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of this. Okay, great. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make this my endpoint. And that's gonna be my out point. That's great. Now, I'm gonna do Control U this time, or Command U on the Mac. And this time, I am not going to have this checked, and we're gonna see what the difference is gonna be here. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Voda Foss. Okay, and I'm going to uncheck restrict trims to sub clip boundaries. And we're gonna see what the difference is between those two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And I'm gonna have a 
new, there she is right there. There's my sub clip. Okay, so let's go ahead and just drag that into my sub clip. All right, I'm just gonna drag this over to here. And I'm just gonna move this so we can kind of see what our distinction is between those two sub clips. All right, let me go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. And I want you to notice that this particular one has those little triangles that we talked about in the last video. This one does not. What do we know about that? It basically means that this is the beginning and end of this, right? So I can't really go beyond what I have clipped out. With this one, it does give me the option to then go beyond this and to even slip and slide and do all those things to go further and make this longer. With this one, can't do it. Can't do it this way or that way because I've restricted the boundaries around that, okay? So it's an important thing to know about because you won't really be able to do anything further, but maybe that's what you want. Maybe you've committed to that. Okay, that, that's all you want. You don't want anybody mistakenly going beyond those boundaries. So that's why you've clicked on that box. But with this one, it does give you the option to do that if you do feel comfortable doing that on your own. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you here with our sub clips, I'm going to change this from going from icon, changing it from thumbnails back to our list. I just want you to see how your sub clips look a little bit different, right? You'll notice here how the icon is different than regular clips. Of course, this is the sequence right there. Okay, and that's relating to this sequence that we have here. But I want you to notice if we go back up to these, right? So it's gonna look a little bit different than what we have here. So it's basically telling us that this is a sub clip. So that's how you'll know. And you can go ahead and add on your metadata display and you'll be able to see that down below within our Premiere Pro project metadata, you'll be able to see, you could get some information about your sub clip start and end very easily. And of course, you'll have to make that nice and big. And you'll be able to see that this in fact has information on the sub clip, sub clip, where the other ones do not because they are in fact not sub clips. Okay, so lots of ways to understand kind of what's going on here using our little icons there. And of course, also looking at the sub clip beginning and end. All right. So you'll definitely find a lot of utility for sub clips. So use it, practice it, and we'll see you in the next video. In this next video, we're going to switch up gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about speed of your videos. In our intro to Premiere, we talked about how you can actually speed up an entire clip or you can even slow it down. So a little review on that. If you right click, you'll notice here is the option to go to your speed duration. And you'll notice here I can make it maybe two times faster by saying, okay, this is gonna be 200 speed instead of 100 speed. And notice the duration changes, I can go in reverse. If you have some sound, you can go ahead and maintain the audio pitch so things don't sound too crazy, okay? and then. Also, you wanna make sure that um, everything else before and, be, and, and after it, everything gets rippled, right? So you have all that stuff if you wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice it's gonna be twice the speed, running super fast. But what if you wanna have variable speed, okay? What if you wanna have just for certain parts of it, it's just gonna go super, super fast, and then it's gonna go super, super slow, okay? That's what's called time remapping, all right? so. My timeline right now, I've set it up to be having my video to be a little bit taller. Okay, so you can see I can go ahead and make that smaller or I can make that taller just like that. Okay, you can also work with these guys here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to have this little effects option shown here because I wanna to, want to be able to work with the different levels of certain types of effects that I can now work with keyframes to be able to apply those effects at certain part and then apply them in other parts, but they're gonna vary all throughout. This is gonna be our first introduction to what keyframes are. So this is gonna be very important that we understand the concept of keyframes because the concept is the same all throughout, but the utility and the application is gonna be slightly different depending on where you are within the program. Okay, so let's just see what our options are here first of all. So I'm gonna go ahead and go right to 
my clip, and you'll notice there is this FX option right there. If I right click on that, I want you to notice I have motion, right? Which all kinds of different options right there, which is pretty neat. We're gonna get into our different effects and effects controls in a little bit. And we'll be able to change a lot of these things. Okay, you'll also notice here is opacity. And by default, believe it or not, we are actually in opacity, right? So if I wanted to actually make some changes to this in terms of how see-through it is, I'm in opacity already as it is, right? So you can see here, if I were to drag this little line down, just like that, notice how this gets a little more dim, but if there was something behind it, I'd be able to actually see it. So by default, you are going to be in opacity, right? Without having to really do anything at all, you should see that selected. What we're gonna do now is something called time remapping and speed, okay? So how is this going to work? I want you to notice that there's this line right here, okay? And this is the speed that the video was taken in, okay? So nothing's really changed, right? And if I were to go ahead and make this come up like this, right? You'll notice how everything now changes, right? Everything's going really, really fast. So it's very similar to what I did the first time, right? When I actually right clicked on it. So I don't necessarily need to do this, but it is another way to accomplish that same goal. All right, but what if I wanna do something a little bit different? Let's say I wanna have her kind of starting off running really, really slow, and then have her go really, really fast, and then go slow again, all right? Just for a little bit of kind of fun, a little creativity, and also maybe it's communicating something. So how do we create keyframes on these lines, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply hold down the control key on my keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be the command key. And I want you to notice I'm gonna get this little plus sign. And I simply click and then I get this little guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one right over here about, and I have another one, and I have another one here, and then I'll just do one more here. Okay, I want you to think about a keyframe as sort of the beginning and end point of some type of change, right? So it's going to start off one speed here and then it's going to vary, right? And when it gets to here and then I have individual control in this part right here and then it's gonna change right after this keyframe is here. Think about it as sort of like, like, like an elbow or a joint, right? Where it's like you can kind of bend at one point and then something else starts on the other side, right? So each of these are like individual joints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by dragging this part here lower. So only from this part here, from like whatever it is, five seconds, right, is going to be slower where the rest of these are going to remain the same. Now, as I do it, it's going to look a little bit odd because the actual clip itself is going to change. Why is it gonna change? Because the length, the duration of the clip will also change, right? Maybe it'll get longer, maybe it'll get shorter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move my mouse over this and click and drag down and you'll notice what's happening there, okay? Go ahead and do that even more. Let's go real slow, okay? Because it's gonna be slow, it's then going to make the clip a little bit longer. So let's just go ahead now and watch. That's gonna be slow, slow motion. And then right when it reaches that second keyframe, it's gonna to go to normal speed. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna bring this back up a little bit. So we have to wait so much. So it's gonna go, you notice how the little percentage is coming up there. So we're just gonna go a little bit slower for this segment. And then suddenly she's gonna be going real fast for this part. So let's watch this. Let's have to wait so long. Let's go over to here. Running pretty slow, and then all of a sudden. And let's have her go slow once more. Get a little bit more on this side. And we finish off with the regular speed. Okay, so pretty neat feature, right? Because you've probably seen that done, you know, in a variety of different formats and maybe different scenes you've seen. How do they do that? So you do have that little bit of control, you know, where it's like you might see that where, you know, a car is coming in or lots of things are coming in and you want to be able to speed everything up. And then suddenly when the object that you want to see actually just comes in, 
you want to slow it down. So it's like, okay, great. So all in one clip, you can have that variable speed. Okay. And it all starts with right clicking on here and going over here to time remapping and then changing the speed. And then very important, we're going to create these individual keyframes to be able to have them all independent of each other, to be able to do independent speed elements all throughout one clip. All right, so you wanna practice that and you can certainly do that for some of these other ones here as well, but we're gonna try and work with other effects, right, in a slightly different way when we go over to here to our effects panel and we can see different things that we can do that are similar to this right to so some of these options that we have here they're going to give us a little bit more control but this time remapping really gives you probably the most amount of control and of course we do have time remapping within the effects as well okay so we'll be able to see all that in just a little bit but in the meantime please go ahead and practice this up try to do it on these clips if you like to or try it out on your own okay and we'll see you in the next video In this lesson, we are going to cover some of the basics of color and lighting, but more specifically, we're going to work with effects. So we're going to learn how we can use the effects panel to do some very basic and very simple, but very sophisticated changes to our video. So if you look at my video here, you're going to notice how it is what it is, but I think it could be improved. I can have a little more contrast, right? I can maybe brighten things up a little bit, mess with the white point and the black point to have a little more texture. Okay, so this is gonna be some really great post-production tools. Now, what this is also gonna allow us to do is get introduced to the effects panel because there are a ton of options within the effects panel. So let's go ahead and click on effects. And you're gonna see on the right hand side, I'm gonna have my effects panel here. And let's go ahead and make that so it's kind of grows a little bit so I can see more of it. Now there's a lot of stuff built into here. We're, we'll explore a lot of these things. We've already gone into our video transitions. You'll also notice that there's a bunch of different presets that you might want to explore, but I think we'll take a look at a handful of these at some point as well. But it's definitely worth checking out some of these things here. But what we're gonna do at this point is do a quick search for contrast. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the box there and just type out contrast and spell it correctly. Now you're gonna see I have a lot of different options around contrast that now appears. So there's so many options that searching like this really can save you a lot of time and it comes up relatively quickly if you know how to spell, unlike me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is very simply, I'm just gonna bring in this auto contrast. And where am I gonna bring it in? I can certainly bring it in to my timeline here, but you'll also notice how I have this effect control panel right here. And this is where a lot of your stuff is gonna come in. And some things may even look familiar to you, right? Like time remapping, you might see some things around your opacity in our last lesson on Premiere Pro intro. We did some stuff on movement as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is simply bring in our brightness and contrast. I'm gonna bring it into here. So you can see now I have a new set of parameters for me to play around with for this video. Okay, and it's now embedded onto this timeline. Even though we don't see it, it's actually here. But you will see very faintly this little effects thing there, and it tells me that there's something going on there. All right, so nothing's really happening, but let me go ahead and just play around with the contrast. So I'm gonna move my mouse over this right here. You can see contrast and you can see, oh, very nice. I'm getting a nice little bit of richness on my image here. Let's go ahead and bring down my brightness a little bit more, maybe bring it up a little bit, right? So you can see, very nice. That gives me a lot of control around that. Okay, so I can very easily reset those by coming over here, just the same, right? Let's go ahead and bring up my contrast again. And let's see what's hiding inside of here. And you'll notice that there's a ton of options potentially living inside of brightness and contrast for me to have a, maybe a little bit more control and maybe even a different way to interface with it. Okay, and as I did that, you'll see that a lot of the other options that we're hiding also appear as you expand it out. Okay, so each of these is gonna have their own set of parameters and options that we're gonna explore as we go through. Okay, so let's go ahead now and bring up our auto contrast. 
I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in here. And you can see what that does. And you can see I have my black clip and my white clip. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit. You can see, ooh, it brings a little bit of texture. Let's bring that down a little bit. Maybe you wanna see the clouds a little bit more. A tiny bit like that. And you kind of just kind of spice the taste as you come together. All right, so I can go ahead and bring this up here a little bit, bring that, it's a little too much contrast. Okay, fantastic. Now, one thing to note about the effects panel, right, the effect control panel, is that there is kind of an order of operations here, right? So depending on which one is on top, you might get a different effect. If I drag this above here, notice how that actually changed things a little bit. Let's bring this down a little bit and that changed things a little bit as well. All right, what we're gonna do in the next exercise is we're gonna learn how we can do black and white and that's gonna be also a difference of like how do you wanna actually show it in terms of the stacking order and that's gonna demonstrate a different look depending on what order things you're gonna be in. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just take a look at it. And you can see how the grass is a little bit more rich. Okay, not too bad. And maybe I'll go a little bit further with my black. And very nice, right? So it really brings out those greens. Okay, so you can really experiment and by just looking at some other elements inside of here, let's just type out depending on what, what your levels are here. You can see there is my auto levels, right? You can see, bam, I can bring that in. And then if you're comfortable with this, you can say, all right, you know what? Let's actually go a little bit deeper with each individual level of the lighting inside of the image. You can see that there's a lot of different things here that you can play around with, right? That's gonna give you a lot more creative control around this, okay? So this is definitely, definitely a spice to taste kind of thing, you know, and there's really no harm in doing this, but you can see, right, how you can actually take a look at that. So you get a very, very different look there. Maybe I'll bring that down a little bit, okay? So, you know, you really wanna experiment with these, okay? Now, I'm actually gonna remove this and very simply, by simply clicking on levels there, I'm just gonna hit the delete key and that goes away, but the other ones remain. All right, so really I wanna encourage you just to go experiment with what's inside of all these. You see there's really gonna be a ton of them to play around with. And we're gonna be doing a handful of these in this, in this um, video series, but whatever we don't do, feel free to experiment on your own. Okay, so that's about just working with some basic lighting, contrast, brightness, and a little bit of levels and a little bit we're going to look how we can make this into a black and white image and i'm going to show you how we can do some pretty neat different key framing to achieve a pretty nice creative effect okay we'll see you in the next video well thank you for joining us i've had a great time teaching you all the wonders that is premiere pro and i hope you are feeling empowered excited and creative around what you can do with this amazing program and even though we covered a lot in this class, there is a great deal more to learn. Again, thank you for joining me here and happy creating. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.